morning children let's pray lord father god we thank you for waking us up this morning and we thank you that is another sunday i pray may you help us to learn something in our sunday school and i pray may you help us to use it in our lives and use it to bless others in jesus mighty name i pray amen good morning ch children good morning boys and girls you are welcome to primary pass this morning may the lord bless us today in jesus name amen Today's lesson is titled, What Jesus Did For Me. What Jesus Did For Me. That is the title of our lesson today. We all knew that Jesus has done lots, lots of things for us. We want to read our memory verse. It's taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Let's read together. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. All power is given unto Jesus in heaven and in earth. Now, let's look at this little play. What did you see? You can see the devil can't don't have power to pull God down. God has the power to pull him down, and he won. That is what God can do. Now let's look, go to our Bible reading. Children, open your Bible. Our Bible reading is Luke chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. But we are going to read some selected verses. So read along with me. I'm going to read Luke chapter 8, verse 26. Verse 26, 8:26. And they arrived at the country of the Gardeners, which is over against Galilee, 27. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Can you see where we read? In our last lesson, if you remember how Jesus healed that man that was brought to him through the hole. And Jesus healed him. Today, let's now we can see Jesus was going to that city in Gardenis and he saw this man that is full of devil. Full of devil. And he has no clothes. Somebody naked and he's full of devil, evil spirit. And he did not live in the house. He always lived in the tomb where like they bury people or in a bad place. Verse 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, that Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Can you see? When he saw Jesus, he saw Jesus, he knew Jesus. He knew that Jesus is more powerful. He knew Jesus is the most, more, most powerful in everything that he can do, everything. So he saw he cried. He cried unto Jesus. Let's read verse 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils will enter into him. His name is Legion, that is a lot of devil. More than 60,000 devil, evil spirit is in that man. He has a demonic spirit. Very evil things that is possessed with evil things, fighting, cutting himself, doing all sorts of evil things. But Jesus knew. And he himself, he knew Jesus has power. And he said, There were many. Let's read verse 33. Then went the devil out of the man and entered into the swine, and he heard, and the head ran violently down a steep place into the lake and was choked. When Jesus saw him, Jesus spoke to that evil spirit. And Jesus commanded those spirits to go away from him. And those spirits went into the swine and they were choked up. Let's read verse 38 and 39. 38. And now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, 39. Return to thy own house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. In verse 38, Jesus has removed the devil from him. And then uh, he wanted to stay with Jesus. So, children, you know, 
when you come to church, Jesus has seen you and you have a wonderful time in the church. Some of you want to stay in the church, you don't want to go home. But you, God wants us to go home to be good at home. He wants you to go to school to be good at school. So Jesus told the man, go to your people, go home and show yourself to them. Verse 40, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Now, everyone wants to see Jesus. Everyone wants to receive Jesus because they knew that he has performed a very miracle, powerful truth. Let us be healed from one sickness or the other, or maybe you hurt your fingers, or your eyes, or your nose, or you have cold. You couldn't speak. God has healed you. That's what God can do. God has power all over sickness. God has power all over any problem. Or you, you are not good in your math and English, or your, your, your spellings, you score zero. And you pray to God. And the next week, you were able to spell correctly. God has power to give you knowledge and understanding. God has power to heal you. God has power to provide for your parents, to give you. If you ask mom and dad to give you something and mom said no, just tell to Jesus. Jesus will do it for you. God has power to do anything. From where we have read now, children, you can see how Jesus went to that city and healed that man with evil spirits. And then he took all those spirits from him and he was healed and he showed it to people and to the house. So Jesus wants us to tell others what he has done for us. Jesus wants us to let others know that he has power to do all things. He wants us to receive the devil. When the devil is coming to us, we tell the devil, no, go away from me. I'm a child of God. Through the Bible reading you are reading, like a memory verse today, as he has told you that he has power, both in heaven and earth. So Jesus has power to do everything. Just tell Jesus, no, I don't want to steal again. You see, that spirit of stealing will be away from you. No, I don't want to fight. Even your friend push you. You say, Jesus, help me. You have power. That is how to resist the devil. And that's how you get the power from. You say, Jesus, no, I don't want to do it. I'm a child of God. And that person will go away from you. If, you, if your friend push you and you refuse to push your friend, your friend will go away. So with that, you can see, you have, we see the devil. And God will give you power to go and sin no more, not to steal again, not to fight again. The Lord will help you this morning in Jesus' name. Like when we have read, if you look at this rock now and this sponge, you can see they are almost the same size. If you press your arm, press this rock, press it together, you know it's not going to be smaller, it's remain the same. Now let's press this sponge. You can see I'm pressing them. Can you see the sponge in my hand? No, it's been squeezed, squashed together, choked together. But this rock, I can't. So, God has very more powerful. You can't push God. You can't overcome God's power. You cannot. It's only God that has more power. Look at this sponge. It doesn't have any power. So, devil does has power more than God. Jesus is more powerful because we can't overcome. Look at this. It's been shoved together. But this cannot be shoved together. We are going to bring a key statement from our memory verse, which says, All power is given unto God. All power is given unto God. That's our key statement. Activities for ages 2 to 5. We are going to look at the difference. Below are two figures of the man from Gadara. Finish them by drawing a face on each figure to show how you think he felt. The first one, you see it, and the second one. Then ages 6 to 8, say, Jesus has all power. If you had known the sick man from Gadara, how would you feel about the thing that happened to him? Read the sentences below. Finish the faces to match what he said. Thank you. Next week's lesson is power to work for Jesus. Power to work for Jesus. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. I believe you all had a blessed week. Welcome to Sunday School. We are studying lesson 100. 
title and individual call. Shall we all read our key verse together after the count of two? One, two. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Well done, boys and girls. That was a wonderful reading. Our Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 48, and Romans chapter 10, verses 10, uh, verses 12 and 12, uh, 12 and 13, but we are only going to read few verses because of our time. Let's open our Bible to Acts chapter 10. I will start from verse 34, our memory verse. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. 35. But in every nation he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is acceptable, accepted with him. Hi, boss and guests. What can you see in my hand? It's a magnet. Let's see what is going to happen. Ah, can you see? The magnet has picked everything from this table, little table in my hand, but there are still some that did not pick. The power in that magnet has picked all these things, and the power in the magnet is like the power of God that He picks us and calls us for salvation. And the, those things that the power of the magnet pick are the ones that say yes, and so also when God calls us, and those that say yes are the ones that answer the call of God. But you know what? God will not force us. There are some that did not say yes to the call of God. Those things that the magnet is unable to pick, it's kind of, he represents those people that does not say yes to the call of God. May God help us today to answer the call of God. And those that have not answered the call of God, if they will tell, if they will pray to God and ask God to help them to answer his call, God will help them. So may we answer the call of God today, not be like all this thing that the magnet is not able to pick. May we say yes to the call of God. Amen. In our story lesson of today, we learned about uh, Watts and Chicks. Watts was uh, a boss of his own work for himself, and nobody there talked to him about Jesus. And this very day, he has planned to go to Tavern after work because he has got paid. And he wants to go and enjoy himself. Tavern is like a pub. So while he was walking and such a noisy, in such a noisy place, he had a voice that came to him and spoke to him that the only true happiness is in the Lord. And it was like, who dare to say that to him? He looked around nobody and it was so noisy. He went to ask from other people around him that are walking. It wasn't them. So he realized it was God that was talking to him. And his plan changed that day. He went home and told his parents what has happened. And the following Sunday, he went to church. He gave his life to Christ. And after that, he was able to tell many people about Jesus. How many people do we know his life has touched? And they have been able to say yes to the call of God. And that is how God calls us individually. Also, we learned about what, about um, Chicks. Chick was very, you know, he, he bullied people. He was very, you know, he, we learned that he learned how to fight. And he was a bully. He bullied the, his co-worker. So, you know, yell at them, shout at them. And they were so afraid of him. And they don't like him at all. Mad at him. But he realized one of them was different. And started watching this person will either be smiling at him or quiet. And he got closer. The Spirit of God made him to go closer to this person. Who is this person? It was Ben. And when he got closer, he spoke to him. What church do you go to? And he told him that, uh, oh, I don't belong to any church, but I'm a Christian. And started asking questions from him. And by and by, he followed Ben to church. 
And this is how God wants us to use our life to be a shining light to others. And he gave his life to Jesus. And he was, you know, all his life, we learned that he lived a Christian life and he was telling others about, you know, the changes God had made in his life. He went back to the man that he fought and made scar on his face to go and apologize for to ask him for forgiveness. This is what God can do for us when we give our life to him. So may God come and help us to say yes to Jesus and to be a shining light to other people out there. Amen. Let's watch this little video clips about Sister Anu and Sister Umpa. 2011 is when Jesus saved my soul and that's when I started my relationship with Jesus um, and after that he called me to be an intercessor to be praying for a few members of my family and some of my friends um, and over the years I can say that God has actually saved their souls which is really wonderful to say um, majority of them anyway so um, I, even though I haven't been always consistent with praying for them but God just keeps reminding me and helps me to just like start over again with like praying for them. So I'm really thankful for that. I think my calling for Christ is to be in the choir because God has given me a passion to sing. And also he has given me the talent to play the violin. So I find that I'm able to use this talent and this passion to glorify God. They have both answered the call of God to salvation. They've said yes. And now they realize the Spirit of God also has spoken to them that they have more to do for the Lord. And now, God, the Spirit of God has made them to understand that, you know, uh, like for example, Sister Ampo said that she realized that she was called to be in the choir and also uh, to play her instrument, to use her talent for the Lord. Sister Anu as well, you know, said that she realized also she was called to pray for others, to intercede, pray for them so that they can get saved. She has prayed for a number of people and they are now saved. And this is what God can do for us. If we listen to God and His Spirit, they will lead us and lead us aright. And I remember my own as well. God called me at first to be working for old people, to take them from their day home of the elderly, take them from home, their home to church and take them. I was driving a van and by and by, then I became a Sunday school teacher. And God has been blessing me and I'm so happy by what God has done for me. You know, when we answer the call of God, He wants us to be blessing to others. He wants to bless us and be blessing to others. He wants us to listen to His Spirit. And the Spirit of God is so powerful. For example, we might need something and we don't have money. Maybe we ask our parents, dad and mom, they don't have money. God can go and touch other people's heart to do that thing for us. And they will just come and give that thing to our daddy and mom to give to us. That is how the work of where the power of God work and the spirit of God work. May he come and help us. But first even we need to say yes. We need to be saved. Those that are not saved, they need to be saved today and say yes to the call of God. God call us individually, you can call both the small one, the younger one, it doesn't matter your age. It's our Bible question said, God is no respecter of person. He's ready to call us at any stage of our life and no matter how old and young we are. And when we call, He will answer. So may God help us to say yes and answer His call today. Amen. Um, Remember our key statement for today's lesson is, when God calls, I will answer. May God help us to answer the call of God. As Ben answered, has, have, has Ben, uh, what's a chick answer the call of God and be blessing to other people. May God come and do the same thing for us today. Amen. Our lesson activity is display. Will you serve Jesus? Our next week lesson is lesson 101, title, Used of God. Let's put our hands together and pray. Let's close our eyes. Lord Jesus, thank you for our lesson of today. Plant your love your love and your word in our heart. As you help those people in our story lesson of today, come and help us. Help us to answer when you call, O oh Lord. Save our soul. Plant your word in our heart, Jesus. Help the primary power. Save them, O oh Lord Jesus. When they call, when they are sick, heal them, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Make all of us ready for heaven. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls. See you next week. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.